Hey, it's Joe Ferrer with Geek Toolkit, and today I'm going to show you how to take OctoPrint, which is software that helps control 3D printers, and plug it into Home Assistant. At the end of this, you'll know how to take basically the status of your printer and do home automation actions on it. For instance, for me, I'm printing personal protective equipment for the healthcare workers in my area to help with the COVID crisis. And I want to have a notification that lets me know when a 3D print is done. We're going to talk about a couple different things here. One is we'll talk about getting the integration set up. Then we'll talk about how to get a Lovelace card set up. And that will look like this here. And then when that's done, we'll talk about how to do Node Red to actually do the actions for the automation and do some really advanced stuff with it. I don't want to do a deep dive on Octoprint, but I do want to give a quick walkthrough because I know some people have never seen it before. Octoprint runs on, well, it runs on a computer. In my case, I run it on a Raspberry Pi and a distribution called OctoPi. And this is the web page that's served off of that Raspberry Pi. It's very similar to how Home Assistant works in that you install the software and then control everything over a web interface. Now, I also have a webcam, obviously, plugged into that Raspberry Pi, and that's what you're seeing here. This cable coming off the front of my Ender 3 is actually the OctoPrint cable that's controlling it. OctoPrint software has a couple of built-in things, such as this control down here. Down here, you see the G-code files. It doesn't have a slicer built in by default. And then there's the status of what's going on with the time left and such. Now, one of the things that makes this really powerful is there's an incredible amount of plugins for it. And they do all sorts of different things. For instance, this one here is showing me the cost of a print. This one here is rendering me a dashboard. Um, I have time lapses built in, but I can also use Octolapse, which does really beautiful time lapses. I can talk directly to the printer. I can actually visualize the bed using the auto bed leveler I have to find out how my uh, leveling looks. All right, so that's a quick walkthrough of Octoprint. Now, Octoprint. Uh, under settings here has an API tab. And if you click on that, you'll get an API key. That API key allows you to query it and get data back in what's called JSON format. This is what that looks like if you do it raw. So you get a bunch of data that looks like this. And let's see if I prettify that, it looks like this here. This is the data coming back. Now the good news is you don't have to do this for the basic stuff with Home Assistant. Home Assistant actually has an Octoprint uh, configuration that built in that's very powerful. It's got two main things that you're going to want to fill out. One is your host, which is the uh, IP address of your printer. Do not put HTTP in front of this. It's just simply the IP address. And then the API key is your API key from that configuration page I was telling you about. I'm going to use File Editor. I've got mine set up, but I want to just show you what it looks like configuration.yaml, you'll edit this, there's the host. I've got my API key hidden in the secrets file. I've shown in other videos how to do this. And then I've added two more things here. One is if you have a heated bed, you wanna add this because by default, it defaults to false. What this allows you to do is query the bed temperature. The next thing is adding the number of tools. This is how many like hot ends you have or how many nozzles. So I put one for the Ender 3 Pro I'm using. What that'll show up as is the bed temperatures will show up here and then tool zero temperature shows up and this is the temperature of my hot end right now. Once you've edited that configuration file, you're gonna to wanna to reboot. And when it comes back up, you can go to configure UI, click plus, and then select what kind of card you wanna do. I did a lot of stuff in the entities card, which allows me to do a bunch of entities. And you'll see all of the options of what you can add here. This one, the binary sensor is if it's printing or not. So you see on off. Uh, we've also got the bed temperatures, tool temperatures, current state, uh, time elapsed and remaining. When you fill that out, you'll get something like this. You can do a, a single entity card. Up here, I did the job percentage as a graph. I'll leave this up to the user and how you want to design your UI. For me, just having a card up here is really nice and handy. I can see what's going on with my printer. There is a webcam API. If you have a camera hooked up, you can actually use the camera component and get access to the camera, both the snapshot and the live stream, and pull them in as well. You're going to want this portion down here, the camera portion. So here's Node Red. Let's go to 3D printing and I'll show you how this wires up. So I'll delete these two out. First thing you're going to want is the trigger state. And the other thing we're going to want is the call 
call service. Trigger state is basically something that will fire when a state changes. The call service is how we get Home Assistant to actually do something, actually call something else. Now in this case, I'm gonna use the notify service so that it calls that, and in the notify service, I'll select my phone. But first we wanna have it trigger when it hits 100%. So let's double click here and say, we'll give it a, a friendly name so it shows up. Now the entity ID, again, I can type Octoprint and see a list of them. I wanna trigger this on job percentage. So what I wanna do is say when the job percentage is a number and a constraint of 100, there you go. So there's my constraint. I say add constraint, this entity's current state is 100. So when that's 100, this top node will fire and it will go out to uh, whatever's connected to. So I'm gonna connect it there for the message event and I'll go here for my service call. When the printer's done, I'm gonna want it to call a service. Now this service could be whatever you want. It could be turn a light on and off. It could be have a smart speaker say something. It could be, you know, turn on a motor, whatever you wanna do. For me, I want it to notify me via my phone. And so I'm gonna use the uh, iPhone service. So I'm gonna say domain notify. And then the service here is gonna be my phone. And what this will do is I have the Home Assistant app installed on my phone. It will notify me through that app. Now the data for this app is in JSON format and it's gonna look like this. We're gonna have curly braces on the outside. We're gonna just say in quotes message, quote, the print is complete. That's it. So now that I have that, I'll give it a friendly name of um, send message. Now that I have that, I can test it with a uh, injection node here. I can just plug that in and when I hit this, then it will call the send message. Let me deploy this to make sure that everything's saved out and out in the cloud. There we go, I hit send and it went off to my phone. You just heard my phone ding and that's all hooked up. This is pretty much it. I can delete these two, I can deploy this and now when my print is done, I'll get a text message, or uh, I'm sorry, a notification rather, on my phone. And I wanted to have a bit more information. When I investigated it, I found out that the integration that Home Assistant supports has a lot of data, but the file name for whatever reason isn't included there. There's all sorts of stuff that you can get back you know, if the printer has an error, how it's printing, you can get all of these things back, but I couldn't get the file name and I wanted it. So then I started going down the, the rabbit hole of, can I get node red to send an HTTP request to the raw JSON, which is here, because the file name is inside of this JSON. The next thing I needed to do is I needed to authenticate to get that JSON and I needed to add a header. And so I went to this page here, which talks about how to add headers. And I'll put these pages in the description of the video so you have it and you can see follow my path. This is what I ended up with. When the print completes at 100%, then it sets a header and it sets this header here for the API key. Now I have my API key off to the side here. Basically I set that equal to my API key and I return the message object. This is a function node. So if you go here and you type function, You'll see that function node, that's what that is. That allows you to put JavaScript in and manipulate the message object. The next thing I'm gonna do is send an HTTP request, which is this node here. And I'm gonna send it off to this URL, slash API slash job. I got that URL looking at the API for Octoprint. And what this means is we can call anything in Octoprint using this. The job returns this JSON here so all I had to do next, once I called that is I said, return a parse JSON object. That returned a percentage and that percentage came back with like seven or eight decimal places. So another function node here to clean that up. 
and I took the progress.completion object, which is where the percentage was, and I assigned it to the progress.completion times 100 divided by 100. Once that was done, then when I got to the send notification, I wanted that file name injected into the notification. So I had to do a way uh, or figure out a way to get dynamic data into there. If you do two curly braces and then don't do the message, don't do MSG, just start with payload. You can actually specify anything in the message payload. Now, again, I'm doing this for people that are a bit more familiar with node red so that they kind of understand how I did this. But what I get now is I get a notification that says what the file name is and the percentage complete that that file is. Now I only file fire on hundred percent right now, but in the future, if I wanted to have another trigger, I could hook in right here and make a new pipe and I could trigger in and say, maybe every 25% give me a status update so I can have my phone monitoring a print that's a long print and know how things are going. I thought this was really powerful because the other part of this here is between this header and this HTTP request, I could pretty much do a query for any JSON and authenticate uh, as long as I can authenticate via header alone. And that opens up a whole world of things I can bring into my home automation system that may not yet be supported officially by Home Assistant. And I thought that was pretty swell. All right, I hope that part wasn't boring at the end. I really felt it important to share that. And if somebody wanted to follow along, I wanted to get those screens up so that they could copy what I had and use it. And I can put this in the comments if, if you missed something or if I didn't do a good job. But at the end of the day, either way you do it, this complex way or the simple way, when the printer is complete now, I get a text message. And that means I can print more face shields and help more healthcare workers. And if you're doing that, you can too. Thanks for watching. I'm Joe Farrow with Geek Toolkit. And until next time.